Hey everybody, it's Sophia Marco, Dish Out on the Movies. Today I'm doing my um, top 10 old movies, which is 20, 2022 and before. So it's not like 1940s or whatever, if you think that's old, which it is, but still, it's just 19, uh, 19, 2022 and below. Anything that's not 2023, okay? And, okay, I have a picture of the list. Usually I have this written down, but I just did it on the computer in Marco's room, and uh, <clears throat> so I just took a picture of the, of the list. And so I wanted to do two honorable mentions. Oh, one is 12, so we'll do 12, 11, and then we'll go 10 and all the way to the top one, okay? So my two honorable mentions are, <coughs> are Puppet Master Revival, that's the 12th one, and the other one is Bone Tomahawk, and the Puppet Master Revival was a movie made from fans. So it's not a studio movie. It's from a it's from fans who got the money together and did a script and had and I guess one of them works or owns a toy store, so that helped. <coughs> and uh, I thought it was really good. It's uh, you know they have been doing Puppet Master, you know, what would you call it, uh, sequels in the last few years and they've really been crappy and this was better than any of those yeah and i uh and i appreciate that um and i think it's a shame i don't think a lot of people have seen it i could be wrong but it's it's really good it's really well done and uh, if you have a chance to check it out uh try to do so because it is and if you appreciate puppet master movies which are you know about those puppets uh blade and um jester he's, he's the biggest pumpkin head i mean pinhead one. tunneler pinhead and, uh, torch shooter, leech woman leech woman and uh you know there's some good puppet master movies that were well, made by the studio back then but that's a while back. The, way the way ones, back then. The ones and the, the latest <laughs> ones have been horrible. Well, they've been mostly not very good. I mean, there was a a, a good one, you know, the Doctor Death movie. Uh, but frankly, this one was better because yeah, that was better than that. The, it just it felt more like a Puppet Master movie, and it felt more like the people who made it were fans of the series than the people who made the Puppet Master movie. So that's so it gave a familiarity with the way things are done in a puppet master movie, and they know what they like, and so they portrayed it in the movie. And I thought they did a good job. So I just wanted to give them credit. And then my eleventh um, one, um, it's called Bone Tomahawk, and it's really funny. I'd never heard of this movie. We got a trivial horror, trivial pursuit, and this question there was questions about this movie called Bone Tomahawk. So I'd never heard of it. Marco never heard of it. I believe. Was yeah, it yeah, I did. I saw it, and oh. Safi was bad mouthing it, and oh. she was saying that it was bad and it's stupid, even though she hasn't <coughs> seen it. Right. And I said, No, Safi, it's good. You're going to be forced to watch it. And she's like, no. Well, no, no, no. It. And then I had to force her. I watched, actually watched it a couple of times because I had uh, my husband watch it too. And then so I watched it again while he watched it. So um, I thought it was different. It's a horror movie, but it's about the West. And wasn't Kurt Russell in it? He's like the sheriff. Yeah. And... Um, and it's, it's a surprising movie because the people who you think at the beginning that seem the weakest are the strongest. And they're the survivors. 
which is really funny because I mean it's really obviously it, it looks obvious anyway that, that that's the way it's going to be and uh, in fact Kurt Russell I think gets killed and um, it's just and it's about these Native Americans but they're almost like it's kind of like um, oh what's that movie time about time when they go back in time and they have to face those oh monsters oh. in the cave Ooh, uh, uh, timeline no not timeline um, the time machine. The time machine. Yeah, it, it's, it you, reminds <laughs> me. It reminded me of that. Only these were Native Americans, and you would hear every time they would come around, and you know, it's they hear this dangerous noise. It's kind of like hearing coyotes in the middle of the night. You know, coyotes are around uh, where we were, the other place anyway. You could hear them yipping in the middle of the night. You knew that's what that was. And um, <coughs> not that I was worried, because the cat we had was inside. But um, <coughs> anyway, these Native Americans, they were like these people. And they had developed their sound by putting this bone thing in their, I don't know, in their nose, way up in their nose, or the back, no, it was in the back of their throat or something. And they would make the sound, it was kind of like a warning cry to the rest of the group uh, or that they were going to do something bad or just, it was a growling cry and it made this really odd, eerie, whistling sound and it was just, it was scary. And they were very violent and they, they were cannibals and it, it was really gross, but it was a really good horror movie. And I had never heard of it. It was just, it just popped up in this trivial pursuit and there were like multiple questions about it. Like, what the heck is this? And that horror, uh, by the way, that horror trivial pursuit game is really hard. Yeah, so, well, they have a lot of questions about like things that nobody really cares about. Like, there's so many varieties of like topics and things and it's kind of like, <coughs> there's, a, there's a little bit too much because... They should have made it more focused. They should have, because you can always make a second horror trivial pursuit and you can add more obscure questions, but it's it's really difficult. And so and it's, it's telling because when we play it, I don't even do very well most of the time. You know, like last time we did it for my birthday and Safi won and it was because of luck. Because of guessing, no, I just yeah, guessing the I right answers. Two or three answers, I just guessed, and it was a miracle. I mean, I wish on some of my like way back when some of those SAT and other kind of tests like that that I took that I would would have done that guessing. Sorry. Okay, that's those are my two honorable mentions, and. Um, like I said, I think I had, what did I say, 53 or 63 films. So I already did my top, my bottom 10. And so these are my top 10. So now I'm on the 10th one. And it is called Behind the Mask. And it's not a regular movie. It is a documentary. And it's about, um, what's his name, the guy in... Um, Wisconsin, who liked to... Uh, no, it wasn't. I thought it was. No. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, I don't know what it is then. Yeah, typical. Okay, well, it's my tenth one. I thought it was really good, and I can't even remember it, but I thought, it, but compared to the rest of these movies, it was very well done. And so that's why I put it up where I did, even though I don't remember a lot about it, because it is a documentary. And it's not something I would watch. No, it's not a documentary at all. It's a you movie. You said it was. It's in the style of a documentary for the first half. <sighs> okay, I'm going to move on. Okay, my ninth one is the is Arcade. And I thought this was... I, I had watched this years ago. And there's a suicide in it. And so I warned off uh, my sons not to watch it. 
uh, we have a suicide, we've had a suicide problem here where we live. And the one thing, uh, you're not supposed to uh, dwell on that. I don't know, and they're, they're really good about keeping it on the down low here, or they have been in the past. And, um, but I watched it again because we were uh, watching these movies, and uh, it was, I thought it was really good, and it was well done, and it was scary, and there was uh, suspense, and there was excitement, and... Uh, and it was about a video game, actually, and about playing this video game with this company. And it really, I mean, it was really interesting. It was really good. It was entertaining, despite the fact there's a suicide in it. And uh, so I would recommend it, uh, even though, but just be warned if that's a problem for you. Okay, my next one is... Friday the 13th, and I can't read it, it's part, uh... Seven. Seven, okay. The I New apologize. Blood. I apologize. Um, this one, we watched all of the Friday the 13th movies. <coughs> and for the most part, they were pretty boring and crappy. But, you know, we watched all of them, so we get a good feel for, you know, maybe there's more good there's better ones than there are worse ones. And this was one of my favorites. This was my favorite, I think. Uh, because here they had this uh, bad guy and bad people. And this girl who looked like an innocent girl who uh, you would see anywhere and you wouldn't never any no, know anything bad about her or weird or anything but she had this power to manipulate objects with her brain she had psychic powers and I know that sounds ridiculous but it was a fun thing to add because she didn't have to worry about defending herself against Jason or anybody else she can handle it by uh, manipulating objects and other things that would protect her or destroy or mess up what the other person was doing. And so she could take care of herself. She didn't need anybody or anything to help her. And I liked that, I thought it was fun. And it may sound goofy, but you know, when you watch, how many of these movies were there, Marco? Uh, 11 or 12. So when you watch, let's say 12, just, for an even number of these movies. And it's really, it gets really old. And <coughs> and like at the beginning, they're really boring and probably that really, really a, the second one, or no, it was the first one where uh, Betsy Palmer from the past <coughs> was in it. She played the mom, which was a real shock and surprise. And it wasn't necessarily a really good one, but it was pretty good. But this one was my favorite, so that's why I put it up so high. It's number eight. Okay, now we'll go to number seven. And that is The Miracle on 34th Street. I hope it's the one, right one with Roddy McDowell playing the um, psychologist. And because of who he is, he was given a big part and he's a very entertaining person. Uh, instead of, uh, and he, so he did all the cycle analysis. They, they drew out his part as much as they could. And you know, he was overstepping his bounds like in the, all the other movies where there is a psychologist for the Miracle on 34th Street series. And he got a pie in the face from the Santa. And even because, even with that, he had to go to uh, <coughs> the psych ward, which was kind of weird. That was unrealistic. Yeah, that was totally unrealistic because that could happen to anybody, anytime, anywhere. And they wouldn't be considered a psycho. And I, that's a strong word, I know, but I mean, I'm just saying that. 
and uh, and then have to go to court and have a competency hearing because he put a pie in somebody's face. I mean, that just isn't right. And I like that because in these some of these other ones, not the first one, but they had these big canes and they really whacked on the psychologist in front of children and in these other ones. And so I thought that was nice. The Santa was good. It was played by Mr. French. And if anybody knows what I'm talking about, it's the guy who was Mr. French in a family affair. And he's, uh, you know, British. And he, <coughs> you know, if you knew him, he had really dark hair. It was like black. And it's so funny. He has white hair for this and the white beard. But it's funny because I think his eyebrows look black. So, anyway, I thought that even the little girl did a pretty good job, and so I, I, and I, I thought it was entertaining. It was nice to watch a, a series for Christmas. We watched the Home Alone series last year, and so Miracle Upon Miracle for Miracle on 34th Street, there are multiple Miracle on 34th Street movies or presentation, like TV presentations. And so we were able to get quite a few of them, and then we could compare them. So I just thought it was really good. And mainly because Roddy McDowell, he's just a really good actor, and he just added so much to it. And they knew that. That's why they gave him the part they did, made it bigger, and had him in the movie. So, okay, my number six one... Um, this was Audrey Hepburn, and she kind of played a little bit of a nefarious person who... Um, That's what the movie's <coughs> called? Number six? Called did you say number six? Number uh, Breakfast six at Tiffany's? Breakfast at did you forget? Tiffany's. Did you forget how to do, to do a list video, too? What's wrong now? What? What, what do you mean? What wrong? Well, you, you, you said uh, this is Audrey Hepburn now. Okay, this is number six. <laughs> which is really weird. Oh, <laughs> like you I guess you really like her because, like, that's, that's the only reason why we were doing that. Marco, this is Breakfast at Tempties. Actually, I was thinking about you. This is one of Marco's favorite people, and uh, he did not like her character in this movie much. Well, I would hope that no one would like her character. Like She's you, kind of a user. Yeah, she was a she user. She was a, almost like a um, gold, you, gold digger you could like, person. You could like her aesthetic and you could like the look of her character and her acting, but if you like her character, there's something wrong with you. You didn't, no, you, had, you didn't get she, the movie. She was actually a bad character. Um, and the only thing she seemed to really care about, besides herself, was her brother. And her brother got killed in the movie because he was in the military and in the war. And I think it was supposed to be World War II or something like that. Anyway. What's World War II? A anyway. <laughs> so what? So, uh, she was devastated. And, and, the, and after the, all through the movie, she's been, like, flouting around, using people, men especially. She could get anything she she's wanted. She's a prostitute. And I didn't. Think of her as yeah, a prostitute. See, but Safi she was kind of like a gold digger. Was, no, she was a prostitute. Well, Same she was thing. Also, a gold digger. Well, a, a, a gold diggers are prostitutes, Safi. I don't know. Anyway, um, probably. So, but it was, uh, it, it ended up okay. She was mean to the cat. This cat who'd been doing, she, she it'd been her pet, but she never had a name for it. She just called it the cat. And all throughout the movie, uh, she kind of had it, like, trained to do all these things. And then in the end, she got mad. She was also grieving over her brother. And she got mad, and she just put it out in a big rainstorm. I was thinking, like, God, the people who own this cat and are training it. I bet the cat is like, I never want to work on another movie again. And, what do you uh, mean? They found the cat, uh, the guy who was in it, uh, the romantic lead, and uh, they got together, but she was like, all throughout the movie, she was trying to marry these rich people, 
So they would just take care of her. She wouldn't have to do anything. They would just pay for everything. She'd have a party and all these drinks, and they, they, it, the drinks would be delivered. You know, I'm talking about like bottles of whiskey and wine and champagne. And then she'd say, oh, so-and-so, somebody will take care of it. <coughs> and so there'd be some rich guy there who would, because they liked her, and maybe wanted to score with her or whatever, they would put the bill. And she did this all throughout the movie. And, and this one person, they got upset because she'd been working with this, well, I can't, I don't want to go into the whole movie. But well, the, the thing was, her. was that she pretended, she th pretended like she was this independent woman character. And she really wasn't and at she, all. And she wasn't independent at all. No, she had to have, <laughs> she did not, uh, <coughs> she did. She got her money from men. Yeah. She was actually wa uh, working, not working with, but she would go see this mafia guy in prison every week, and he would pay her to see him. And you're like, that's kind of strange. And there was more to it than that, but I won't go into that. But um, drugs and prostitution. <coughs> so. Um, Anyway, but she still was. She still was. A, it was. A, she was an interesting character, and uh, she she did very well. She did a really good acting. It was just a really good movie. But it's not what you think at all. I'd never seen it before, and it was not what I thought it would be at all. Why? I just thought it was supposed to be kind. Of, you know, like My Fair Lady. You know, that was about. So I. Thought well, everyone was, said it was a chick flick. I heard all these people, and they what? said, and all these men, and they said, "I'm not into that movie. That's a real like chick flick." And which it's, one? What? My Fair Lady or this? No, one? Breakfast at Tiffany. You're kidding me. And I was like, I well, don't. Not really. This movie's not a, a <coughs> chick flick at all. No, not at all. Okay, I got to keep going. All right, my number five movie is called The Echoes of the Darkness. Or of, yeah, of the darkness. No, in the darkness. Oh, in the darkness. I don't have my glasses on. I can't uh, read. The, uh, remember, I'm looking at a screen. Well, maybe you could remember. <coughs> anyway, this was a really good mystery. And this is actually based on a true story. And I really loved it. I just thought I'd never heard of the case. I may have heard of it a little bit. But it didn't, you know, I just didn't hear enough about it to uh, realize the impact. <coughs> you know, once, you, you know, things have changed in terms of finding out about these cases. You used to have to watch, um, you know, that story, uh, that show with uh, Robert Stack. Ooh, Richard Thomas. Robert Stack. Ooh. Uh... Marco, what are you doing? And about mysteries, and you know, you watch it once a week or something, and it was really good. And also, 48 hours on CBS, and they would have something like this too. But uh, this was a this was in the I think 70s or 80s. It's a 90s. While. Oh, is it that close? Okay, yeah. it's a true story. I even looked up about the case. I wanted to see more about it or just check to see if what I had watched was true, if there was more to it. There is more to it, I mean. Oh, yeah. Well, of course, they couldn't do everything in this movie. It was limited, but it was still good enough to draw your attention. And it's about this manipulative teacher who takes advantage of all these people and, like, he tells... Uh, he tells his uh, girlfriend they're going to get married and go away together. And it's just a bunch of hogwash. And he kills his uh, or <coughs> wife. I mean, just killed. I just, uh, it was just so. He didn't have a wife. Well, who, what, who, he killed somebody. And everybody, oh, he killed the girlfriend. And uh, that's right. He, and, this, and the kids. She was a single parent. But what he, he was no, kids. what he was really doing was protecting her from Doctor Smith. Yeah, <laughs> Which is funny. that's right. The Doctor Smith. I kept hearing this. Doctor Smith. Doctor Smith. You know what I would think of? Lost in space. Lost in space. Doctor Smith. Doctor Smith. 
He's at it again. He's trying to mess up the spaceship. Well, this Dr. Smith was a supposedly had guns and he rigged he could rig bombs and all this. Stuff. And he he had his own interesting thing. Like there's another thing is that <coughs> his uh, daughter and her husband uh, went missing forever. Yeah, and and nobody ever knew what happened. To nothing her. has even happened with that case at all. And so the fact that, like, he was connected to that, too, is just very, very creepy. But why he uh, wanted to work with this guy is odd. <coughs> what do you mean? What guy? I would suggest you watch this. It's called Echoes in the Darkness. It's really good. It's a really good mystery, if you like mysteries, which I do. And it's very rare nowadays. I mean, this was made before, but... Um, it's really rare nowadays to watch a good TV, any, anything, streaming, anything, a mystery that's worth it. And it, this was worth it. And uh, plus there's a lot of unresolved issues around it, which Marco just talked about. Okay, my number four movie, that was number five. My number four mo movie is Saw Six. Now, you may think, oh my God, she must be insane. But uh, especially when you don't like violence as much as maybe Marco. <coughs> and that's true. I watched, we did another thing where we watched all the Saw movies. And oh boy, it was really amazing. Um, all the traps and the people and the, the character who plays saw and his wife and then you have corrupt police people and i just was that a part of the insurance movie the insurance no this was the i thought this, this was, was part six part six is about the insurance guy oh God. would you not remember that either it, it was the other saw the latest one no, why, okay. why would that be an old movie? No, that's not an old movie. That's right. Well, so why would that be on okay. the list? So anyway, but this Saw 6, it was about the insurance guy. And this insurance guy, he rejected... Saw had... The guy who played Saw had cancer. And he wanted to get this treatment that was in Europe. which he heard would help him, and so he refused him. So everybody in the insurance AG agency was, he set traps for all of them. And um, it, even the guy's relative and his attorney, and it was just unbelievable. It was really, really good. It was one of the best ones. That's why I have it up so high. <coughs> and um, if you want to watch Saw movies, I mean, you have to prepare yourself if you're not used to, if you've never seen a Saw movie. Uh, it's very violent, but it's very, uh, the guy is extremely smart. And you, I mean, you kind of feel sorry for the rest of these people in a way, but they're still all working for the same goal. And that is you reap all these uh, cash amounts from people paying for insurance and then you refuse to cover their costs when something bad happens. And it's almost, in a way, it's like, it's almost like a, a criminal enterprise, really, the way they turn everybody down. And... Uh, <coughs> Now this Saw guy, he was, he seemed to be wealthy. He had a lot of businesses, but still, uh, there was, they were turning all kinds of people down. He could see that, and he thought they should be punished forever. <laughs> so it was unbelievable. It was really good. So it was, it's one of the best Saw movies. So if you want to watch that, just beware. Lots of violence, but it's really good. So. Okay, I'm on my number three, and this is going to surprise you. This was Goosebumps 2. <coughs> What's the full title, Safi? I don't know. <laughs> I can't read it. I have to pull it up. Okay, Haunted Halloween. Yeah. Sorry. Remember that? Yeah. 
You watched it. You watched right, the whole right, thing. So. Right. so, this was a movie that Marco and I ignored because at first, a long time ago, when it came out. Because the first one was so bad. The first one was terrible. We, we made an extra effort to see it. And um, it was terrible. So we thought, well, if that was so bad, which it was, the second one couldn't be better. But guess, guess what? It was. And it was a lot better. A lot, a lot, a lot. And um, I would suggest if you wanted to see a Goosebumps movie, because the, the series that they just had on TV was horrible, and the only thing they got right was about uh, Washington State University being a really good football school. Uh, they are in the, tonight, they're playing in the top two championships with Ma Michigan to see who's going to be number one in the country of college teams. And that was the right thing. But that was the only thing that was right about that series. And, um, but this movie is really good. It sticks with the old uh, stories and characters. <coughs> Which if you're an adult and you watch this, the old books, the old series, the characters, uh, it's nice to see them brought about in a modern way and uh, because, you know, it was something that you saw in your past and, and it's fun to see it relived in a creative way in the future. So, okay. My number two is Fright Night and this is the remake of Fright Night. And, um... <coughs> thing about this one it just it just jumps right into the story it seemed like in the first one there's a little bit more of a build-up on certain parts of the story that's a lie well I think there's no that's a complete lie there's actually more of a build-up in the remake you think so yeah at the beginning well I mean at the beginning they showed the vampire killing someone but I mean they showed in the uh, in the original they showed them bringing in his coffin for him to sleep so like well i know that but the killing the killing the right away killing the, the, the instant killing that to me that's kind of jumping right into it it jumps into it and then it comes and then it draws back out to set up the story and i thought this one was actually kind of a lot scarier although the first one was pretty scary too and um they had different characters for everything, and but it it's it's really good. It's worthwhile. It's fun to see good horror movies. I you know I like uh, good horror movies. Sometimes I like them better actually than holiday movies because holiday movies make everything seem like everything's perfect and everybody's perfect, and that just isn't right or true. And horror movies are more well, they're more fun. And Halloween is fun. And so this is a really good um, movie. It's a good remake and um, of a good movie, too. So it's funny that you would have actually two good movies that are the same thing. One is a remake of the other. And that doesn't happen very often. So um, that's, a good, that's why I picked it for number two. Okay, my number one is another surprise, and I hate to give it so much credit. It's Top Gun <coughs> Maverick. <coughs> and I put it at number one, and I saw two. Now, this is this is another interesting thing. What it, it's different compared to what I just talked about. Although this isn't this isn't really a remake. It's a sequel. Uh, but you still have some of the same old characters, like Tom Cruise, for example. And um, I and, and and they also it just the whole thing. The the person who made the movie looked back at the first one and saw all the mistakes and the BS that came with that movie, which made it like some kind of macho crap thing. 
and it was almost unbearable to watch. I was just about ready to puke. And this one, I was like, oh boy, Tom Cruise again, which I don't, who I don't really care for. Well, it was kind of like the male version of Barbie. <laughs> I guess, but what? anyway, it was, uh, it was so much better. It was done so much better. And I, and, and the thing is, I give the director a, a lots of kudos and lots of appreciation for looking back at the first one and realizing what could be better and making it better for this one. And it really, to me, that's, I mean, you don't have that nowadays. You just have these people, they don't give a crap. And they just make these new movies and they just, uh, they stomp around and they throw everything out the window and it's just like that Babylon movie. It was unedited, and it was just all over the place, and it was drawn out, and it was boring. And because, and then also you have, um, <coughs> what was that other one that was new? But I, I guess it doesn't matter. But anyway, just the people who make the movies, they don't care. They don't care about the research. They don't care about what was done before and what didn't work. So they just make their own uh, vision of it up without considering the remarks and the comments and the uh, changes that people suggested should be made. And this guy did. And so I commend him for his, and I actually enjoyed it, even though I don't care for Tom Cruise and anything about him. And, but anyway, he, he, and he also made a very big effort to uh, make the movie a good movie. Uh, Marco said that he took flying lessons, and didn't you say he actually learned how to fly one of these special... Uh, Sophie, he's, he's done that for a long time right, now. Right, so he's made, done it for a long time, and he was teaching other people too. So, I mean, he was... Uh, he made an extra effort. So you had all the people making this movie making an extra effort to make it really good. And so that's why I put it at number one. And it was very entertaining. And it was edited properly. And it was good acting. And that's it. So that is my top ten plus two, <coughs> what would you call it, honorable mentions, which was 11 and 12. Or the movies of uh, old movies uh, before not, uh, 2023. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and become one of our subscribers to give us feedback and tell us what you've been watching. And Happy New Year and goodbye. Bye.